Okay, hi. Uh, welcome. This is going to be hopefully a quick video, maybe about uh, 10 minutes here. Um, I, I noticed that um, I have a link to a video about like the practice assignment zero, uh, but it's a little bit different from what you guys need to do for the uh, 530 uh, assignments. Uh, so anyway, I, I just want to quickly kind of show you at this point, I've got a terminal open here. Uh, I, I just finished doing all the steps of um, installing the, the dev box and setting it up. Okay, so I basically have done the, the, the first five steps here. Um, and at the at the end here, I'm down and, and it successfully installed the dev box. Okay, so if you've gotten that far, um, I talk a little bit about what you need to do after that. You need to, um, you know, to access your VS Code server running in your virtual machine by going to this URL. Um, don't, don't skip this part where I talked about down here. So if, if, if it might be a good idea when you first successfully install your dev box to actually shut it down and reboot it, which I'm going to do here is you should use the command line. Um, I mean, you can, the, the, as part of the instructions, it installs the Oracle virtual box GUI, uh, but you really shouldn't stop and start your dev box from the GUI here um, because it's being managed by Vagrant. So there'll be problems if you do that. So instead, if I were to stop it, you need to be into that directory where you did the Vagrant up command and do a Vagrant halt. That will actually shut down, cleanly shut down your dev box virtual machine. Um, and then uh, if you want to restart it, you know, you need to change into that directory. Um, I put mine in boxes. I think in my instructions, I told you to put it into repos. But uh, wh whatever that directory is, you have to open up a terminal, uh, change into the subdirectory where you clone the repository. And that's where you always do the vagrant up and the vagrant halt commands. OK, so I'll restart it up here. So some things to look at when you start up your dev box, um, it's important that the uh, uh, port 8080 is being forwarded. This, this is how the uh, interface for Visual Studio Code is served. So it's actually running Visual Studio Code in this virtual machine, in a Linux virtual machine, but it, it forwards the port 8080 and it runs it with, with a web-based interface. So th that allows you to basically connect to it um, on your local machine at that port okay so now i've got running again another thing you, you might want to make certain that it mounts the shared folders you'll need that in order to, to submit your assignments for this class here okay so I'll, I'll quickly show that if i remember here as well all right so uh so this looked like a clean startup you shouldn't get any errors uh, you might get some warning sometimes but um, you should have the guest editions and things like that um so like uh, we said here, if it's running, you can go, you can open up a tab and go to that um, address. So 127.0.0.1 is just uh, a special IP address that means your local machine. And then 8080 is the port number that is being forwarded from the virtual machine to your local host, right? So if that's working correctly, um, if you go there, you should be able to access your Visual Studio code, right? Um, and um, you might get something different here. I'm, uh, I'm not used to having the terminal come up. Uh, normally you get like a, yeah, like a getting started screen here. So uh, the first time you run it, all right? Um, so, oh, sorry. So for this class, there's really only one task that you need post installation configuration task. And I believe that there might be some issues. That's another reason why I wanted to um, do this video. So I, I know that, that there seems to be a bit of a bug, sorry, in, in Visual Studio Code here. So, so let me do that. So you need to have the C++ IntelliSense extension uh, installed. So as I describe in those instructions, you, you shouldn't uh, install it from the interface. So you shouldn't you know, search for C++. So the normal way you install in, in, uh, extensions, you go down to the extension tab here, search for an extension, select it and, and install it. Um, so for example, um, oh, that's weird. Um, I'm used to having the, the official IntelliSense uh, extension coming up when you search for C++. Um, anyway, doesn't matter because we're not going to be using that. And so some things might change since the last time that um, I installed a dev box here. So what you should do um, is click on the, the three dots here to get additional um, 
options under the extensions and install it from the VFX. We're basically install it from a file. This was downloaded for you as part of setting up the dev box here. So you want to install it from the CPP tools, Linux.bsix. Now, what I've been seeing though, again, like I said, this seems to be a bug. This installs version 1.4.0, which is what I believe that we need here. All right, so um, it actually installed the extension. Um, so we should see that it's uh, installed here now, right? Um, and, uh, oh, but notice, um, you maybe didn't see it. it. It seems that for some reason, it um, it automatically updates it. And, um, the, and, and, and the problem is, is that it seems like it, when it automatically updates it, it sometimes picks the wrong uh, architecture. So it uses like a Linux ARM architecture instead of a Linux x86-64 architecture, which is probably what most people are using, right? So, um, um, so, so let me show you what happened. So um, let me get back to, uh, I thought I might get you started on the assignment one as well in this uh, video here, um, but real quickly. But so the normal way that you work with assignments uh, for this class is you want to do a, an open folder, right? And you want to open up the assignment that you want to work on, okay? So the assignments should end up being in uh, just a second here. So, um, um All right, so um, sorry about that. So coming back here, um, so the way you work on assignment is you should first start by opening up the particular assignment. Uh, so let, let's start working on assignment one. So if you go to open folder, uh, you need to go to sync assignment, um, assignment one, right? And then you want to open up assignment one to work on assignment one, okay? So what this will do is open up all of the files. Um, so you should have like an assignment um, one-sim.cpp, so one test.cpp and so on. Okay. Now, um, and I mean, you know, you can open these up by double clicking on them. So I normally start by opening up assignment one tests here, for example, right? Um, now, one thing you should do right away is make certain that the build system is working. So you can always build these by hand by opening up a terminal. So if you go to the um, uh, terminal here and do new new terminal, um, and uh, just a second, let me pause again here. Okay, so if you open up a terminal and you have like your assignment one um, assignment open here, it should open it up in that directory. So you can always do, um, we're using a tool called make for the build system here. So you can always do like a make help to, to list all of the um, targets that you can do here. In particular, uh, the first thing you should do for these assignments is make certain that the build system is working. So you should start by doing trying to make clean. This will just clean off everything um, and ensure that um, uh, you do a clean build from everything gets built from scratch. And then you can do a make or a make all to rebuild everything, right? Um, and, you know, if your build system is working, it should compile three or four files. Uh, and, and it compiles the assignment one test. It compiles the hypothetical machine simulator. Um, it, it compiles this catch two. We're using this catch two uh, unit test framework um, for our assignments for this class here. So, um, And you shouldn't see any errors. And it should successfully link everything together. And then finally, you should be able to do a uh, make... Um, uh, make tests and it will run the unit test for you. Okay. Um, right. So uh, the, the test should run, although many of them will be failing for the assignments for this class initially. Right. Okay. Now, um, if your IntelliSense is working, uh, so, so back to this, what I originally started with. So I'm not certain that, that this one that was automatically installed um, is going to work. So this is version 1.9.8 here. So you, you can try it out. So for one thing, you should, should be able to have keyboard shortcut working. And if the IntelliSense isn't working, your keyboard shortcuts might not be working here. So if you do, if you open up um, a file in a browser, and if you do control shift one, that should be, okay, that is working here. So, so that should be uh, bound to do it running the make clean. Okay, so your normal workflow to, to work on assignments in this class is like a make clean. You don't have to clean every time you want to rebuild, but uh, if, if you're having some problems trying to debug something, you might want to clean up everything. But so, so the normal thing you do though, when you're doing 
incremental changes. So adding a line of code and testing is then, then you would go ahead and do control shift two in order to do a make all. So this actually does a make all here. Um, and then you can do control shift three to, to do the tests, okay? So the other thing is um, the IntelliSense should, um, uh, just a second, I need to pause for a second here. Okay, so the other thing for the IntelliSense is um, um, it, it should have uh, the, the code formatting set up uh, to work for our class here. Uh, for, for our assignments for this class here. So what that does is, is there's a code style uh, uh, defined um, and as part of these assignments here, it's, we're using a tool called the uh, CLang uh, formatter. So you should have a .CLang format in your assignments here. Uh, so basically what that means, if you, if you type in code, you don't do any imitation or spaces here, something like that. If you Control S, it should reformat and save. So it's actually working here. So, um, so I'm a little bit surprised by that. I was having some problems um, on another dev box here. So mine does seem to be working um, for the um, version 1.9.8. If, if, especially if your code auto formatting isn't working, you, you can always uh, format it by hand uh, from the terminal by running a make format. Um, so again, if you open up a terminal, that's one of the targets, uh, make format, that will also run the CLAG formatter. Uh, if this isn't working, uh, you can try this. So what I did, what I had to do before, so, so I'm not exactly certain why this is working now in this one. Um, uh, if it's working for you, don't, don't do anything, that's fine. Especially if you have the code formatting working and you can run the keyboard shortcuts. And if you're getting the IntelliSense working, so you're getting, you know, um, warnings about, um, you know, for example, missing variables or, or uh, things like that, you know, the, the little squiggle. So if, if it's not working, you might have to um, select the uh, extension, um, go to the gear and um, uh, try installing another version. Uh, let me let me uninstall it here. And then let me try installing from my file again. So actually, I might have fixed this. So maybe so maybe I'm, I'm downloading um, version 1.9 and, uh, and that's the correct one for our thinker. So hopefully, hopefully you're not gonna have any problems with this, all right? So, but but just check that, uh, make certain that, um, you know, your code format is working and that you can do control shift one to do make cleans, uh, control shift two to do make alls to build your system and then control shift three um, to, um, run your tests, okay? So the, these keyboard shortcuts only work if your focus is inside of the editor. So, so there I tried to control shift three, but I had the focus down here, so it didn't do anything. So I have to go back to focus on my editor, control shift three will run the main test, all right? Okay, and then as a final thing, um, okay, just a second, I need to pause for just one quick second here. Okay, so continuing on here, um, Uh, just a second. Okay, so continuing on. So as a final thing, let me just show you like the first task for assignment one here. Um, so to work on the assignments for this class, uh, you do have to, to read the assignment descriptions. Um, so there, there's various ways that you can get to the assignment descriptions. Uh, you can't just open it up uh, right here in Visual Studio Code. Uh, the, there, there's a markdown file called like uh, assignment1.md. Uh, fortunately, you can't really open PDFs in Visual Studio Code, but you could look at the markdown file, just look at that. You can open up your uh, regular, um, you know, so where you cloned your repository. Um, so if I open up a file browser here on my system, I'll show you. So I, I cloned my repository into boxes instead of repos, like I told you guys, but um, here's my CS, CSCI 430 OS Sims assignment, assignment one. So you should have all these same files on your host machine, uh, as well as in your virtual dev box here. So including the PDF, if you prefer to um, uh, look through the PDF here. So, um, 
So normally what you're going to be doing for these assignments um, is you'll start with the unit test task. So for example, the first unit, the first task for assignment one is to initialize memory, uh, implement the initialized memory function. Okay, and, and we give some things here. So the, the purpose of initialized memory um, um, is, so you'll see that we're um, um, using that in the first test here. So basically what we do is we call initialized memory with a base address and a bounds address. Um, and um, if you access then the get memory base address, it should return 300 and the bounds address, the, the last one should return a thousand here. So, so those aren't, you know, initialized memory isn't actually implemented. So you'll see that the test at line 32 and 33 are failing because it's turning zero instead of the expected base address and bounds address. Okay. So, you know, just to get you started, this isn't all of task one, but, but, you know, we could, so your normal thing is, is, you know, you read the assignment description, you get these, um, uh, you know, implement what you're asked to implement in order to get the test to pass, right? So we can get these first two tests to pass relatively easily uh, by implementing initialized memory. So if I go to the hypothetical machine simulator, the CPP is, which is where initialized memory um, is at here. Um, I like using this outline here just as kind of a hint. Um, so this has an outline basically of all the functions in here, including, you know, we can find initialized memory in here somewhere. There it is. To jump right to it, right? So in this case, um, um, we're implementing member functions of our hypothetical machine simulator. So we need to do something like say, uh, this is, this is um, memory base address equals memory base address, okay? So we're passed in a parameter called memory base address and we've got a member variable. If you look at the hypothetical machine.hpp, so here's the header file for our hypothetical machine. Uh, and these are all the member variables. Um, so, so basically all we're doing for initialized memory is initializing these member variables, memory base address, memory bounds address, memory size, right? Um, since I since the, the name of the parameter is the same as the name of the um, uh, member variable, uh, you can disambiguate using this. This is a kind of a C plus plus thing. So, or another thing you can do is you can just change the name of this, you know, um, So I could have called it something like a knit memory base address and a knit memory bounds address. So if there's no ambiguity, we can use you know memory base address equals a knit memory base address, right? Either way, right? I, I prefer the, it's it's more common to just use the same name and to disambiguate in C code using this, right? So if the names are the same, we just say that this member variable called memory base address is initialized to be the memory base address. And this memory bounds address equals memory bounds address. Okay, so uh, yeah, my, my C++ extension might not be completely working, so I wasn't getting, um, I'm not getting um, completion on there. So plus I've got an error message there. So I, again, I have to check that. I'm not completely 100% certain that the IntelliSense is working here. So um, so let, let's just show this. So just to finish this up here. So if you do that, now if we do, if we recompile, so control shift two to recompile here, um, we'll just recompile the files that need to be recompiled. So I only edited the hypothetical machine, so it just recompiles that since I didn't do a make clean first, and then it links it together uh, into our test um, and sim object file. Uh, and then so control shift three should, uh, uh, again, you need to be at focus in here. So control shift three should run the tests. Um, <laughs> so the uh, up there went. So yeah, my keyboard shortcut stopped working here. So I'm not certain if my IntelliSense is, if it stopped working for some reason. So anyway, if if uh, you know if you're ever having problems with with building stuff, you can always open a terminal, which I'm going to go ahead and do here. Then I have to investigate the IntelliSense some more here. So um, if you open up a terminal, let's do the make clean make. 
to build everything and then make tests. So, um, so, so back to that here, um, um, you'll see that uh, if we go back to the test file now that uh, it's actually passing 32 and 33 because I initialized that. So we get the 300 that we're expecting. So it actually passes that one and that one. So the, the first one that's failing now is 34. So we have to set the, the memory size uh, uh, correctly. All right. And there's some other things you have to do for the initialized memory. All right. Uh, and then one final thing for this video, it's probably a little bit longer than I wanted it to be. So when you're ready to submit the assignments for this class, you want to do a, a make submit. This will create a file called um, um, something.tar.gz. So for assignment one, it will create a file called assignment one tar.gz. So this is the file that you're going to be uploading for the operating systems uh, uh, class here, right? So to do that, you do have to have your files being synchronized um, uh, correctly back and forth. So, so again, if, if you do the, the make submit here, if you go back and look at like a file browser um, on your system, uh, so here in my file browser for my repository that I cloned, uh, you can see all those files that, that you're working with inside of your virtual machine, including the assignment one tar.gz, okay? So when you're ready to submit your assignments, that's the file that you want to upload to Mylio online for the assignments. All right. Um, okay, so that's it. That's all I wanted to cover for this video, just to kind of uh, get you started with the assignment one. Um, we will have our normal meetings at two for the operating systems class, and I will see you then um, today at two.